sixth annual Early Childhood Education Conference. We are so fortunate to have Patrick Carmen and Jennifer Clary with us presenting Go Kid Go live in Camp Selway. Um, I had the opportunity to work with both before and I'm just so excited with what they're gonna share today. Patrick Carmen um, is the co-founder and creative director for Go Kid Go and has offered, authored over 40 novels with over 5 million books in print across 23 countries. Um, millions of young, young readers have watched, played, read these multimedia books. Mark, Mr. Caveman has produced, including 39 Clues, Skeleton Creek, Trackers, Voyagers, and Tower Veil. Vale. He's also the creator of Aftershock, a number one fiction podcast on Apple and iHeartRadio. Patrick is a public speaker who presents at events throughout the year, including the National Book Festival, the LA Book Festival, and the American Library Association National Conference. He spoke to over a million students at over 2,500 schools across the country, and we had the honor of having him on our podcast, Early Childhood Education Chatter. Jennifer Clary is also the co-founder and chief operating officer of Go Kid Go, the audio imagination company. I love that for kids. Um, previously, Jennifer founded the Baby Box Company, which supports 2 million families worldwide before being acquired in 2019 by Kristen Bell and Dak Shepard's Hello Bello. So on that note, I am so thrilled to turn the mic over and the floor over to our friends, Patrick Harmon and Jennifer Clary. Well, aren't you nice? Thank you for that <laughs> lovely introduction. I should mention that Jennifer is in, she's in London. So over there, it I is am. about two o'clock in the morning or something like that. Can I Close do math? To uh, Close to 10 p.m. 10, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. So thank you everybody for hanging around. Uh, I, I, I don't know how this works as far as uh, questions at the end. I can hang around at the end and answer any questions uh, that come <clears> into the chat. I don't know how long they'll let us stay. If we're the last one, maybe we can stay as long as we want. So feel free to, to do that, um, and we'll get to some of those uh, when we get to the end. But um, yeah, so I've been writing books for kids for a really long time. And I, I, there's this first slide I want to show, which I think is, is one I like to share with people because you'll know exactly what I'm thinking when I show it. Um, it's a very good slide to, to understand what, what our, our kids are dealing with uh, in the world these days. It's kind of a lot. And they're really like... Um, strange thing about it is it all looks like a lot of fun. So on the one hand, you want to say, oh, no, no, read books and, and do other, don't do, don't do these things. Um, but it's even hard as an adult. When we, I mean, some of these things look like an awful lot of fun. And of course, some of us participate in some or many of these things. And so we're in kind of a complicated time where uh, I'm, I'm old, I'm 56. So of course, when I grew up, there were three channels and there was really nothing to do that had a screen on it. And so we were outside playing a lot and using our imaginations and I think that's a little tougher uh, for kids to do, especially as we head into summer and parents are working. And the easiest thing to do is to put an iPad or a phone or a TV screen in front of a kid. So what we're trying to do with Go Kid Go is battle this a little bit, because as we all know, all this stuff comes out of one little screen. And kids are spending this summer, they'll probably spend most, most uh, young kids will probably spend six or seven or eight hours a day staring at a screen. That's a lot. And we, uh, I'm not going to go through all these one at a time, but just to know that these are some of the things I'm sure you're aware of this, it's nothing new, but there's a lot of things that come out of this behavior that are really difficult for kids. And, uh, you know, the more, once you kind of open up Pandora's box, whatever age it is that, that kids start to get on screens, it's just really, really hard to get them off of these things. So I've been doing this for a long time. Some of you, uh, I'm assuming this mostly teachers or educators or librarians of some kind that are, that are here today. And you'll recognize some of these things. <clears throat> I have really made a, a conscious effort. And I think it's because I've gone to so many schools and a lot of Title I schools where a lot of the younger kids are just reading below grade level and uh, are having a tough time finding a book that engages them. And so I started many years ago, first with 39 Clues and then on forward, trying to find ways to meet kids halfway. And so, of course, everybody's familiar with 39 Clues. So if you're not familiar with Skeleton Creek, that was, that was a, an idea where uh, a young reader will read about 20 pages, and then they come to a page that has a password, and they go online to a, a secret website, put in the password, and they get to watch part of the story, and they get to watch all the sort of scary parts, which these are not really scary books, but, but sort of jump scares 
uh, which really get kids excited. So if you've never done, if you've never done Skeleton Creek, it's so, it's so popular. I, I don't know how this thing just keeps, it's like the little engine that could. Um, the videos have been watched over 50 million times. Every year I hear from tons of librarians and teachers who just read the first part of this in class and then they play the first video and they turn the lights off. And uh, from that point on, uh, the books are checked out for the rest of the school year. So it's a really great way to reach kids who are, who, who you, who are having trouble getting through a book. Uh, and the same is true of Towerville, which is a book and a video game at the same time. So kids can read it and they get to play it in a really interesting way. So I've been going about this for years, trying to find ways to bring kids back to books. And I think that's the thing about the podcast space. And we're going to talk about that today because that's what I'm doing uh, with this company, with Jen. It's not a book, but in a way, it's it's one of the, I think, most important things to make available to kids in a really, really entertaining way. When we entered the, the narrative podcast space for kids about a little over a year ago, whew, there is not much there, which was really surprising because it's such a great medium for kids who are struggling to make the get the attention that they need to, to read a book. It's a really good pathway back to books. Um, but it's also, they're also going to get a lot of the same things out of listening as they would from, uh, from reading a book. And so we have really tried hard to build a universe of shows that are all free and that give every kind of kid some way in to the idea of listening to, to a story. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to talk about with podcasts too, is that in a way, I mean, I, of course I love books. I write books. But when, you, when, a, when a young person is reading a book, they really can't do anything else. It's one of those rare things that when you're, you've got your nose in a book and you're reading, you can't be doing lots of other things. Uh, with the way kids' brains are wired today, I think what you're going to find, and you've probably already found this in your, own, in your own schools and classrooms and libraries, is that listening to something is a lot lighter lift for kids to kind of get them back into it. Um, you know, you can listen to a podcast and do all kinds of stuff at the same time. You could take a walk, you could do your Legos, you could draw, you can do all kinds of things. And so it is an easier thing to get kids excited about than, than a book is. So it might be a good pathway back if you're having uh, some trouble getting some of your kids to read. So I just want to give you five advantages that some of which you probably thought of, some of maybe you haven't, that will get you thinking about why this would be a good thing to use in your classroom or to use with your kids. Uh, either way, um, the very first and most important one, I think, is that it develops children's imaginations. I think that I've said this before on in many talks is that I feel like screens are a lot of fun, but they have this incredibly magical quality that turns off your imagination. Because screens give you so much information, um, kids don't really have to do much as far as their imaginations go. And there's so much great stuff, as we all know, that happens when kids' imaginations are engaged. And what's great about listening is if kids are engaged, it's really good narrative and they get to know the characters in the first few minutes, they are, they are visualizing all kinds of stuff. Their brains are doing all kinds of great stuff that, they, that we want them to be doing. And they're getting a lot of that same imagination stuff, the quality of that as they would if they were reading a book. Um, in the same way that a book does, uh, and I think in some important different ways, listening to a podcast, I mean, it is really good for vocabulary and understanding words, their meaning, how they work. When I've written, written a lot of the books I write, I, I don't intend, I, I mean, I intentionally try not to take out the big words because I know that kids will read a sentence and they may not know what the word means, but if they see it a couple of times in different contexts, they'll kind of figure out what it means. And that is really true with audio. So we, we intentionally leave, we, we, I mean, these are fun for adults to listen to. We just make them so we don't think about, well, how old is this, is this person? We just make them uh, in terms of the vocabulary, we don't try to bring it down at all. And so what ends up happening is kids just, they're, it, you know, they hear these words in context uh, from characters that they love, and they begin to understand, oh, I think I might know what that word means now. And so it's a great way for them to learn vocabulary and the understanding of words and how they're put together. I also think that it develops listening skills in a really fun way. What I feel about this is that you could put something really boring that a, that a young listener can listen to. And woo, that takes that does take a lot of concentration, but we want to minimize this actually as much as possible. And that's why we do narrative podcasts with lots of sound effects and lots of voices, lots of laughs and big adventure so that when they're from the moment they start, there is some 
some work required to kind of stay in it, but as little as possible, that they're just lost in the story and the, the, the sort of quiet concentration part of it is pretty easy, but it really does develop listening skills you'll find in other parts of their life when they start listening to more stories uh, that will definitely develop. Um, and it really helps kids understand complex language. So I think what's great about podcasts or any narrative story is that kids are hearing two characters or three characters actually interacting, which is something that you, you don't exactly get that when you read a book. You can kind of imagine how their, their voice you know, sounds, how they sound when they're upset or when they're happy or when they're sad. With the narrative podcast, you actually get the real thing. And so, you, you know, we're all hearing a lot about social and emotional learning. These kind of podcasts are really good for that uh, because we put our characters into situations where they're sometimes in conflict, they're learning things, they're trying to figure things out, um, and they're, they're talking to each other. And so when kids hear that, it helps them to learn how language works in their own lives, which is really, really great thing. Uh, and of course, this is this is one that I that that speaks directly to you. I've talked to lots of teachers who are having a, a harder and harder time because there's so much testing going on and because kids are a little behind coming back from COVID, that the time it takes to do read aloud is sometimes it's just not there. And so podcasts give your classroom or your library time to like do some, you know, self-directed learning while you're doing something else that has to get done. Uh, so really good for teachers. Um, and then just to understand how, how I went about building the content for this universe, uh, you know, I have seen so many kids. I spend a lot of time when I go to schools down on one knee in a gymnasium talking to kids about what is it going to take to get you to turn pages in a book? What are you doing when you're not reading books? What, what do you want to see in a book? And the same holds true for podcasts. And what we are trying to build here and what I think we have built is about a thousand episodes of content if you kind of jump into this universe, you will literally never run out of content um, across a lot of shows that are very different, but that are in the same universe. So just like an Avenger style universe, if you bring your classroom in via Bobby Wonder within literally like seven or eight minutes of the very first podcast episode you listen to, you're going to meet Lucy Wow. You're going to meet other characters who then spin off into their own shows. And so you can, you know, you can kind of make your way around this universe. If you like Bobby Wonder, great. If they like something else, so they like something more like inventorish, they can listen to Lucy Wow. If they like something under the underwater in a submarine with marine life, they can go to Whale of a Tale. And this goes on and on and on and on. And I'm only showing you a small portion of all the shows that you can find at Go Kid Go. We've really worked hard to build a lot of content across a lot of different interests. Uh, most of the shows I would say are adventurous and tend to be a little on the funny side because I really feel like that's what grabs kids. And most of our shows are not designed to, to necessarily teach anything specific. The big win is just to get them listening at all, right? It's the same thing when we say if we could just get them to turn pages in a book, there's, that's such a big win um, that what's in the book is important, but what the fact that they're doing it at all is, uh, is such an important habit and they get so much out of it. So same, the same thing here. So I would encourage you to go, all you have to do is go look for these three words smashed together. It's just go kid, go. You can look anywhere and everywhere you get a podcast. They're everywhere. You can go to gokidgo.com. You can find it there. Everything we're doing is again, it's all free. We have done a lot of work to make sure that there's no no ads in our shows that are going to be in any way. Most of the ads are for books and other podcasts for kids. And it's, uh, it's very, you know, you totally safe to play in your classroom and, um, and you can fast forward to them as well, which is what I do. And so you don't even have to listen to those, uh, but something for everyone. And, 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 and kids horror is pretty popular right now. Like, like, like a very sort of tame, scary stories. And we're doing uh, uh, the podcast for, it's his only podcast for RL sign the the guy who makes goosebumps, and it's a lot of fun. So that's one if you uh, that you might you might uh, look for. What else can I tell you about these? There's a western about a ten year old sheriff. There's a ten year old uh, girl named Sam Archer who's a third grade detective in her school trying to solve a big mystery. Uh, there's the Arl Stein show. There's this one. Posey Flynn sings is the is a girl who has a big dream to be a um, to be a singer, and so there's lots of music in that one. Story train is good for younger kids. It's a whole bunch of stories. They go off on a little train and when the train arrives through the tunnel, it's in some other magic or like some other country. So they learn a lot about different cultures and hear little stories. It's good for bedtime also. Um, just all kinds of great stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can find something there that would be great 
for your kids or for your classroom. And then we also do Go Kid Go Live. So this is something as you get, as we get through the summer, we're not doing these during the summer, but probably in another five or six weeks, just keep an eye on Go Kid Go. And you just go to the website. It's just, that's just gokidgo.com. And you'll start to see this come live again. We do, uh, I, I present, I come into classrooms via Zoom. It's really simple. It's completely free and introduce all these characters and these worlds to kids and they get to hear them and interact with them and get to know them and kind of decide what shows are, are, are the, gonna be the one that they're into. So um, those, are, those are, we did a lot of those this last year. We probably did, we probably had several hundred different classrooms that were, uh, were involved in these during the, the last school year. And we think it's gonna grow even more next year. So totally free to sign up for, it's really easy to do. You can pick your time, pick your day, and then you just show up just like any old Zoom meeting. Uh, so check that out as well. And I think we will leave, maybe we'll leave this slide up, but Jen, would you rather just dispense with the slide and just uh, show up with your giant uh, face I, on I'm the screen? I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna talk. She's I'm, gonna I'm talk. super so old school. If it's okay with everybody else, I think I'll just turn off the screen for her part because then you can see her more than, than you can see her now. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Let's let's try that. Let's try let's, it. Let's see what happens. Maybe if, if you... Um, Hi. The view, if you view the speaker up there in the right hand corner, you'll be able to see. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, everybody. Pat, I like that we kind of match. Hi, everyone. We do kind of match today. Um, it is it is late in the UK, so um, bear with me. I also have two toddlers, um, so I'm chronically ill, which I don't know how teachers do it. I have like this mad, never-ending respect for everyone who works with tons of small kids because I think that I'd be in the hospital. But um, look, I, I'm I am delighted to be here today because. I have the privilege of sharing our, our absolute newest ed tech innovation at Go Kid Go. <clears throat> and it's a program that Pat started to allude to when he mentioned SEL, um, but it's actually a whole um, podcast world that Pat has brilliantly created along with some very smart partners called Camp Selway. Uh, Camp Selway, spelled S-E-L way, is the very first uh, podcast program that uh, tackles social and emotional learning according to academic standards specifically for use in schools. Um, let me go ahead and I'll actually put that in the chat so that you guys can see what we're talking about. Camp Selway.com. Okay, so you should have that. And Camp Selway stories are exactly what Pat was talking about, right? These are fun for kids. First and foremost, you want them to be engaged with the material. So they're filled with relatable, diverse characters that kids actually want to go on adventures with. And, you know, the way that we think about this is that SEL may sound dry or disinteresting to children if you just go ahead and pitch it. But the idea is that if we get them entangled with the characters, caring about the characters, invested in the characters in a narrative storytelling program context, that we really are on a track to transform the way kids learn and their lives through these positive stories that, that follow these uh, super superpowers, these SEL superpowers. So in addition to the episodes being available in both English and Spanish on two elementary school tracks, we have a pre-K uh, through second grade track and we have a third grade through sixth grade track. Camp Selway comes with comprehensive learning guides um, which engage children in guided activities both during and after listening. And again, Pat alluded to this, what's so brilliant about podcasts for young kids is that they're not uh, having to be sedentary, right? Like one of the things that we know that happened in the pandemic is that children moved around a lot less. So they, you know, and were stuck on screens. They didn't have the 17,000 steps plus that they get at school running around with their friends. They were really sort of isolated. And podcasts are great because they say, hey, you get to go have these stories and you have this learning experience, but let's keep the part where we also move, right? Where we also do the Legos and the coloring and the puzzles while we're listening. Um, so that's what these learning guides are all about promoting. And, and we didn't just create it in a vacuum either because it is to academic standards. We're very, very blessed that in the development of the Camp Selway program, we were actually supported by organizations like NAMI, so the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We were supported by Predict Align Prevent, right? These are places with heavy knowledge of, of mental health and how to best support children in that regard. We were also helped in the development of the curriculum itself uh, because we did it in partnership with both teachers and researchers from the University of Texas. Um, so we were very, very blessed to have those relationships. Um, the skills that children gain with Camp Selway 
uh, and the podcast program that we've created with all of these partners include vital, vital skills, things like self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship building, problem solving, um, and executive functioning skills. So these are things that, you know, not just as a founder of Go Kid Go, but really as a parent are near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's something that I, as COO, being the operations officer, was really sort of swayed to get behind in a big way because it's very much um, a program that we could build knowing that it was supported by data and best practices. So we know that SEL improves academic performance by around 11% in schools where it's implemented through a program. Uh, there's copious research showing that it improves attitudes around self, others in school, that it promotes positive classroom behavior, that both teachers and students find SCL implementation helpful. Uh, it can result in fewer behavioral problems and reduced emotional stress. So when I read all of that, um, I thought, you know, gosh, based on these benefits of SCL, uh, wouldn't it be so great if Go Kid Go, which has such a nimble and agile DNA and is always trying to, you know, use storytelling to solve problems, did something to just make this more accessible, right? So Pat and our co-founder Maya and I, we, we, we brokered these partnerships and we really wanted to make sure that there was an innovative, exciting entertainment SEL podcast program that was available to any school that wanted to use it. And we know that for many teachers, uh, especially right now on the heels of COVID, that implementing anything new can frankly seem you know, insurmountable, both in terms of the time, right? To get your head around a new program and get it in the classroom and also in terms of your budget. Um, and so Go Kid Go is really excited to approach this not as a product push with Camp Selway, but really rather as a dialogue and a conversation that we're excited to start. We wanna be your problem solving partner uh, and having something like this uh, be introduced to students and not create more problems for you. So today, my part of this presentation is to talk about solutions for implementation. And those two challenges that I'm seeking to address today are time and budget. So let's tackle time first. Um, Camp Selway is specifically designed to be highly turnkey. So Pat was saying, you know, there's a lot of ease involved with podcasts in the classroom. It's very appealing. It enables teachers to break off in small groups and work with individual students. And that's all true. Um, so teachers, they can play a Camp Selway episode. And then there is a corresponding learning guide that teachers can utilize that ties to the episode with ideas about activities and discussion questions that have already been created by teachers at the University of Texas that they can use just to, to drive home the lessons that have been learned in the, in the episodes. The children are having fun and the teachers are helping to advocate very important messaging around social and emotional learning. There's no fancy technology to learn. There's no compulsory preparation for, for teachers to successfully implement the, implement the Camp Selway program in their classrooms. And then on the budget side, when it comes to school programming, education leaders, they're understandably up against the wall, having to weigh the benefits of, of spending any money against a program that's relatively untested. So Camp Selway is actively being researched right now. It's been funded for research. It's, it's happening in Austin, but we're in the early days. So we have to lean on studies that have already happened. And we know that Columbia University conducted a significant study around SEL programs to determine cost benefit and the demonstrated fiscal value of SEL programs. And what they found was that there was an average return on investment for six different, so varied evidence-based SEL programs of 11 to one. And what that means is that for every dollar that a school invested, there was an $11 return um, on the SEL program. But even knowing this, we understand it's challenging and that many schools are hesitant to spend to try new programs in the current climate, and that's cool because this is what we did. We decided to make it free. Um, Go Kid Go, we partnered with renowned school psychologist, Rebecca Brandstetter. Um, Rebecca works with half of all of the school psychologists in the country. Um, she is incredibly well connected. And we decided that we wanted to offer Camp Selway to select schools that wanted to participate and really have a dialogue around efficacy um, for free. So we offer the program for free for a full year. And we're doing this to any school that's interested and just wants to get their teeth into it and see if this can really have an actionable difference for both teachers and students. And because of Go Kid Go's really longstanding relationship, <laughs> sorry, my kids, with Tisha and this conference, we wanted to extend that to you all today. So I'm going to send you the link. And if you wanna try it for free, then this is how you do it. Um, let's innovate together. 
and see if we can make a difference for our little ones um, because they've had quite a hard time as Pat alluded to. Okay. There's the link so that you have that as well. And the good news about uh, Camp Selway is that if you fall in love with the program, I know that most SEL programs that are out there, they cost five figures or more annually on a per school basis to license. Um, but if you fall in love with the program and you find that it is a helpful resource for your students, uh, after the first year, which is entirely free for you to just see if this is right for you in your classroom and you wanna continue, it's only $1,500 a year for the whole school. So if you love it and you know that you wanna do it, being equitable is one of the main reasons that we created this company. You know that you're gonna be able to deliver this program to your students for less than the cost of a soft drink per kid per year. And we're really excited about that because it's another way that GoCoCo is trying to break down the barriers and say, okay, how do we make learning more accessible? How do we make resources for kids more accessible? How do we make stories more accessible? And that's, that's the reason I'm part of this company. And that's the reason I love it so much and love working with Pat so much. So GoCoCo is the audio imagination company for kids. Our dream uh, as founders of this company, as parents, is to make a real lasting and positive difference in the lives of children. And the best way we can think to do that is to, to directly connect with the parents and the teachers who are on the front lines of child development each and every day. And we're really hopeful that Camp Selway will be an equitable SEL program, but also a really innovative podcast program that you can trial in the classroom to serve a need that's timely and, and necessary, right? Like we really just feel like the climate is right to, to give this a go. So um, look, we're, we're here for you. I um, can be emailed directly. My, my name is Jennifer Clary and my email is jenniferclary at gokidgo.com. I'll put that in the chat as well. If you have questions about this program um, that aren't answered today and you just want more information, you can always reach out to me to let directly. And I'll be very happy to um, walk you through what we offer. But I mean, I think that for us, this is just such a cutting edge product. Um, and it's exactly what Pat was talking about. He's always on the forefront of innovation on behalf of kids. And Camp, Camp Selway, I think, is the 2.0 iteration of how we do that in the classroom setting. So we're super excited. And uh, I think Pat said we're the, the last presenters of the day. So we can sort of stretch out. And if you have any questions about either, either our, our entertainment and storytelling component or this specific program, then we're, we're all ears. We're all chat, whatever. And just another, thank you. Thank you, Jen. By the way, I didn't get them out. We're giving it away free. Wow. I guess I don't have health insurance for this month. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. I, uh, and just so everybody knows, just in case it's not clear. Um, so I developed a whole bunch of a, a very diverse cast of characters, a whole world that they're in, uh, children for the older kids, and then a whole bunch of forest animals for the younger kids, which are really cute and fun. So if you go to that site, you'll see all that stuff. And these are, uh, they, they, these are narrative stories as well. So they're going to hear a story. And in the midst of that story, there are going to be some challenges that take place that help them to understand, again, how to process. What if I get into this kind of a conflict? Or what if I get into this kind of a situation? Uh, it's really, it's just a fun way for kids to learn. And um, so it'll have all the, all the charm of all the other stories. So um, anybody got any questions? It is late. I bet they're just leaving in droves. I know. They must be. I think it's just you I'm and me, tired, Jen. That's okay. <laughs> and your voice held up. Good job. Way to, way to I hold I up. I hardly at all. <laughs> it's an <laughs> impressive, uh, impressive effort. If anybody has a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. We, uh, we would be happy to answer it. Um, and just as Jen said, we just, you know, we really do. This is what we live for. I've been doing it almost my whole adult life. And I know Jen feels the same way that that's why we built the company is to provide uh, just great storytelling for young kids in a, in a format that I feel like the time has sort of come for this. It's the right time for it. And I think just based on all my experiences, it really is the right time for this. I think we're going to see audio continue to grow. I've several friends who are, are writers who are actively talking about having their some of their books just be audio books and not even be printed books so not the books are going away I love books but it is a really interesting time for this kind of stuff and I think you will find tremendous support from your actual students um, with this kind of stuff so we are still here somebody ordered my books well that's fantastic I hope you enjoy <laughs>
Pat, I want to jump in. I just want to tell the people <laughs> who are left here today that I've worked with Pat and Jennifer um, over the last couple of years, actually. And these two people are dedicated, they're passionate, and they are the real deal. Um, Go Kid Go is amazing. I know that I said something about it earlier and in Dr. Hild and I's presentation, I truly have listened to it. Even as an adult, it is something you need to get in your classroom. It is free. Um, you can use it any way you want, but the stories are incredible. Um, if I was still in a classroom today, it would definitely be part of my curriculum. And that's why I invited them here to talk about this um, Selway, um, the, the rest of it. Um, it's just amazing. So please come on, ask any questions. Um, these two are here to help you today. And um, I don't want them to get away and you not be able to ask. Thank you, Tisha. And really quick before there, there is a question that came in there. Um, I, did, I, I may not have mentioned, but for all of our show, all of our shows have study guides or what I would, what I would more describe as like an activity guide. So if you're going to share Bobby wonder in your classroom, um, there are lots of fun activities, including things like coloring pages and mazes, but also actual, um, things they can do, um, in the classroom. So that's all there for you. And that's all, that's all free as well. You can just find it at the website. You'll, you'll see a tab that just says educators and you'll find all that stuff in there. Okay, as a mother of three elementary age children, I think this is an amazing tool. Well, that's a great question. I love it. We are going to start checking out Goku Go tonight. Even better question. I love that even more. Um, so I just walked by and saw your name and said, I love just love 39 clues. Well, I love 39 clues too. These are such easy questions. I feel like I'm going to put a question in the thing for, for Jen. No. Well, I think everybody's probably had a long day, so that's great. We so appreciate you hanging around to, to visit with us. Uh, if, if you want to reach out to us, just send a note to Jen. If it's for me, she'll forward it to me. Um, and we just are, are so glad that you were here, and uh, we feel very supported in the work that we're doing. So thank you. We are honored to have you here. That's all I have to say, um, and honored that this is your second time to come and speak with us. So. Thank you so much for taking time. I know you're both so busy. Thank you're you for having us. And I just want to say we started our day with Miss Macy Doyle, who is a TikTok sensation that is just doing really cool things to reach out to her kids in her classroom. And we ended our day here with Patrick and Jennifer, who are doing really cool things um, really across the nation and making such great content and engaging content available for our, our, our learners. The minds and the learning techniques have changed and we wanna be changing with our kids. So, so it's true. really great to be a part of this. The beginning of our day and our ending of our day just is so inspirational. So definitely go check it out. I am going to go ahead and share my screen and you can take a picture of the certificate as we just monitor the chat and